Hey, what is up mortals? It is Esberg VA here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 13 of season 2 of What If Deku Had a Regen Quirk. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. All Might stood atop of a building, looking down at the faux city below him. The streets were barren like a ghost town, and you could vaguely make out the arguing of his students echoing between the buildings. His blue irises scanned the main streets below, and he saw the students he was tasked with taking down, Bakugo and Midoriya. The boys were arguing sharply, and All Might heard their conversation vaguely. Looking frustrated, Midoriya blurted out, This is why everybody thinks we hate each other! Why can't we have normal conversations anymore? Bakugo barked back, Then stop arguing with me and focus so we can pass! All Might shook his head at the sight. It was no use. Both boys were too dead set on their position to consider the other side. Midoriya started running as fast as he could toward the escape gate. Bakugo scoffed and continued surveying the city streets. All Might took a deep breath as fresh air filled his lungs. His hand found its way toward the injury on his side. A couple of moments of silence passed until a voice suddenly popped up, startling the number one hero. Shouldn't you be doing your job, Toshinori? The vestige of a woman appeared over his shoulder, kind gray eyes looking at All Might's fierce blue. Her white cape fluttered in the fall breeze as if her vestige was a physical manifestation, but she only existed within one for all, only being seen by the sole holder. All Might looked back and flashed the woman his signature smile. Nana Shimura. The hero began to subconsciously float above the ground below him at the sight of his old mentor. I damn doing my job. I'm just waiting for the right moment to start the fight, as Nezu suggested. Nana laughed softly, and All Might remembered all the years he spent wishing to hear that laugh one last time. Her coming back, even in vestige form, was a miracle he still couldn't believe. Nana responded with an accusatory tone. You're afraid of facing Midoriya, aren't you? All Might's float quirk suddenly deactivated out of shock as he fell back onto the firm rooftop. He sputtered. N no, no, uh, of course not. I just haven't found the time to talk to him yet. He's a very busy student, after all, and... Nana quickly cut him off. Come on, Toshinori, you fought all for one face to face, and this is a 14-year-old child. Stop being such a baby and just fight him like you're supposed to. All Might rubbed the back of his neck anxiously. He didn't know if he could bring himself to fight Midoriya after everything he's put the kid through. After the sports festival incident, All Might tried to approach Midoriya, but it was painfully obvious that the student was avoiding him. And before he even knew it, over a month had passed. And a lot has changed in a month. For one, the embers of One for All reignited, only being stifled by the limitations of All Might's stomach injury. Then he started having weird dreams that only increased in intensity each night, until one night, he woke up with his room completely torn up like a wild animal had broken in. And now, All Might was in the middle of trying to master his newly awakened quirks from One for All's predecessors with little to no success. Okay, okay, he exhaled sharply as he peered back down at the students. Midoriya was still running toward the exit, and Bakugo was still searching the streets. No hard feelings. Just doing my job. The hero said to himself. All Might stood up and felt a comforting hand on his shoulder. Nana nodded supportingly as her vestige faded away. Feeling a revived sense of confidence, All Might finally jumped down from his vantage point. Midoriya panted softly as he got closer and closer to the exit gate. He thought that he could pass if he did the logical move and escaped. This fight was way out of his league, and personally, he did not feel like getting beat up by another one of his mentors. The escape gate was infuriatingly far away, though, and Midoriya only grew more anxious with each passing second that All Might didn't appear. How long had it been? A minute? Two minutes? Where was All Might? Midoriya began thinking back to the analysis sheet Nezu had given him. He and Bakugo were paired up due to their contrasting personalities and inability to work together. This meant that Nezu could predict how the two would react upon facing a certain opponent. How would the two opposites react when facing All Might? Midoriya skidded to a halt and began to run back toward Bakugo in a panic. Once he was close enough, Midoriya yelled out, Gachan! All Might was waiting for us to separate so that he could take us out one at a time! Bakugo turned around and yelled back, Ah, what are you talking about? In one instant, Bakugo was standing in the middle of the street. The next, his body was embedded in a crater at the side of a building. Where he was previously standing was now replaced with the form of someone much taller and painfully familiar. Aye, young Midoriya. It's been a while, hasn't it? Midoriya's body tensed. He should have just left Bakugo behind. Why did the blonde have to be so stubborn? Midoriya shook his head. No, he was being stubborn too. Bakugo wouldn't have been taken out if he had someone watching his back. 
Bakugo retaliated and sent a barrage of mini explosions toward All Might, but the hero simply grabbed Bakugo's face and slammed him into the ground. Again. Since Midoriya was so far from his opponent, he took a moment to think. He could faintly see All Might staring Midoriya down, and behind him was Bakugo slowly getting back up. The teacher averted his gaze from the freckled teen and refocused his attention on the blonde. Once All Might turned his back, Midoriya made up his mind. If he didn't pass with Bakugo, then he'd rather not pass at all. Midoriya ran toward the scene as he wielded one of his new weapons, throwing knives. His aim wasn't the best, as he learned for the stain, but he had pocketed them from the villain's weapon stash, so he figured he had to make use of them eventually. All Might had picked Bakugo up by the collar. With the throwing technique he learned from stain, the knife flew toward the back of All Might's head. The knife, in fact, did not hit All Might. But it did hit the wall of the building next to him, causing All Might to divert his attention from Bakugo. As he looked back at Midoriya, he quickly caught the next knife that was thrown at him, causing him to drop the student. Bakugo was able to use this moment to deliver several explosions to his opponent's face. Shockingly, the quirk didn't do much damage. Bakugo retreated and met back up with Midoriya, and the two ducked into an alleyway. Midoriya wasted no time and asked, Why would you rather lose than escape? What? You just saved my ass and that's the first thing you say to me? Midoriya ignored what Bakugo said and asked again. We can't defeat All Might. And I'm sure somewhere in that head of yours you know that. So why are you so against running away? Bakugo replied sharply. I have to prove to myself that I can do it. That I can become the next number one hero. Midoriya looked at Bakugo incredulously and said, You're doing that now? You have time to get stronger right now. We have to focus on how to pass. You don't get it. Bakugo said, irritatedly. My whole life, everyone's been telling me how I'm destined to be number one. But what if that isn't true? That half and half bastard. That ponytail girl that can create things. Even you. You're all so much stronger than I am. There's something that I'm missing, which is preventing me from being a better hero. And I'm scared of disappointing everyone who's been rooting for me. As much as Midoriya wanted to play therapist, this was not the time. So he did the most logical thing. He punched Bakugo in his frickin' face. Now, what the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? You're the type who wins no matter what, because the most amazing heroes always win. When did you ever start worrying about losing? Snap out of it! Bakugo rubbed the bruise forming on his cheek as he looked at Midoriya, dumbfounded. The freckled teen was right. Bakugo had to get his head in the game and do what it takes to win, even if it meant running away. Okay, you're right. But how are we supposed to win? Both of our plans didn't work. Uh, maybe. We're... Both right. We can't just run away because he'll catch us, and we can't just fight him head on because he'd crush us. Maybe what we need to do is both. A challenging smile grew on Bakugo's face. Well, what's your plan? This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services like Disney+. If you're from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies. But by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase a 12-month subscription plan that costs $99.99 a year. This deal is for a limited time. And thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. All Might walked along the main road of the city battlefield, looking between alleyways for where the students had hid. But then, further along the path, Midoriya showed up alone. The teen provoked the hero. Hey! All Might! Come fight me! The hero took the bait and pulled back his arm as he yelled out, Texas Smash! A large gust of wind erupted from the hero's punch, sending debris and air pressure toward the teen. The glass windows from the buildings nearby shattered, and thousands of tiny cuts began appearing across Midoriya's skin as he stood his ground, until he was swept away in the air currents. Midoriya landed on his back several feet away. He tried to stand back up, but All Might landed on top of him with a broken fence piece. The piece of metal dug into the ground and pinned Midoriya to the floor. All Might kept his foot on Midoriya's chest to ensure the teen wouldn't escape. But little did he know, Midoriya was hoping for him to get close. Using his free arm, Midoriya reached into his utility belt's pouch and retrieved his secret weapon. He pulled out a single syringe filled with a red substance and plunged the needle into All Might's leg. Ow! What was that? All Might removed his foot from Midoriya's chest after a sudden sharp pain. Midoriya let the now empty syringe drop to the floor as he pushed the fence post off of him. Gotcha! 
Now, Midoriya called out, and Bakugo appeared behind All Might with his grenade gauntlets pin pulled. A barrage of massive explosions hit All Might's back point blank, and he was pushed down by the explosion's force. He was confused by the strange stinging in his leg, and now he was caught off guard by a sneak attack. The weights he had to wear were starting to bother him as well. After unleashing the attack, Bakugo used his explosions to fly in the air and pick up Midoriya. The team flew toward the escape gate rapidly, and All Might had to stop them. The hero suddenly appeared in front of the pair, and with a swift punch, both teens were slammed into the ground. The pair attempted to get up as fast as possible, but All Might picked Midori up by the collar and slammed the team into Bakugo. Both teens fell into a pile on the floor, and All Might began to speak to them. Good job on working together, but you should know that cooperation is a prerequisite, not an option. The hero approached the teens, who still lay on the floor, but Midori couldn't contain his laughter. Hey, All Might! Don't you feel a bit odd? The hero stopped in his tracks. Feeling odd? Well, now that he mentioned it, there was that burning sensation in his leg that was spreading up to his organs rather rapidly. That probably wasn't good. Midoriya stood up confidently and helped Bach go up as well. All Might tried to reach out to them, but he fell to the ground as his heart began to beat irregularly. He looked up at the teens, and Midoriya held a syringe between his fingers. Midoriya maneuvered the syringe playfully in his hand as he explained, This is filled with my blood! Since regeneration is a mutant-type quirk, my blood is just basically an extension of me. Right now, my cells are multiplying and attacking your cells as a virus would. Regeneration is subconscious, for the most part, but it can be enhanced if I focus, so don't worry. It'll all stop once Kachan and I reach the escape gate. The teens walked toward the exit as All Might was unable to move. The pain was comparable to his body's state after fighting All for One. Midoriya's blood cells were destroying him from the inside functionally, and it felt like his organs were on fire and there was nothing he could do to quell the pain. All Might then came to a terrifying realization. Is this what Midoriya felt when he had one for all? A moment passed and suddenly all sensations of pain were relieved. In fact, he was feeling in better health than he did before the exercise began. Were the regenerative cells repairing the damage they caused? Nezu's voice then echoed over the speakers. Katsuki Bakugo and Izuku Midoriya have passed! The students walked back into the monitor room and were greeted with cheers from their classmates and various teachers. Recovery Girl then approached Midoriya in particular and asked him a peculiar question. Can I have one of those syringes, Midoriya? I want to do some testing. Midoriya didn't mind, so he handed her a couple. He had an infinite supply of blood anyway. As Principal Nezu began addressing the students, Recovery Girl slipped out of the monitor room to return to her office. She took the blood samples and put a drop underneath a microscope as she observed their behavior. They behaved similarly to when she looked at them after the entrance exam, but she never considered the implications of what these regenerative blood cells could actually do. She took a scalpel and created a cut on the tip of her finger. She then let a drop of Midoriya's blood land on the injury, and before her very eyes, flesh slowly weaved together to repair the cut patch of skin. Her eyes widened as she vigorously typed away on her computer, attention only being broken a couple of minutes later when a Class 1B student walked in. Nato Monoma had various cuts and bruises scattered across his body after what appeared to be an intense final exam. His usual pompous attitude deflated as he stalked into the office and sat on the hospital bed. Recovery Girl was about to do her usual routine of asking questions and then using her quirk to heal the damage, but an idea formed in her head. She started with the general rounds of questions as she inspected his injuries. What happened? How did your final exam go? Monoma laughed sarcastically. You know, just wiped the floor with Hound Dog, just another regular day for me. Probably got a broken rib or two, though. He winced in pain when Recovery Girl touched his side to check the injury. She got some x-rays and confirmed that he did have a broken rib. If she used her quirk, he'd heal in an hour or so, but she had another alternative. She couldn't just inject the boy without consent, so she asked him, Would you be willing to test out this new medication that I've been researching? Monoma shrugged. Yeah, sure, I don't mind. She put on rubber gloves and found a vein in Monoma's arm. She quickly disinfected it with a wipe and inserted the needle. She only injected about half the vial's amount before removing it and placing a band-aid over the injection site. At first, nothing seemed to happen. Monoma didn't seem to be in pain or look uncomfortable, which was a good sign. But then, physical changes began to occur. The purple and blue bruises on his arms faded. Cuts disappeared like they never existed. Monoma suddenly stood up and looked at his newly healed body. Hey, I feel pretty good now. I don't even feel sore anymore. Recovery Girl got another x-ray, and as she predicted, his broken rib was now healed. She kept Monoma in her office for another hour, as she interrogated him about if he felt any side effects. After finally letting him go, she stayed in her office for an all-nighter doing more tests. 
Once the sun began to rise, she held up her printed research paper and rushed to Nezu's office. She met him just as he arrived, and they took a seat at his desk. Nezu poured some tea between the two as he asked, So, what brings you here, Miss Shuzhenji? Recovery Girl handed the papers over to Nezu, and due to his high-spec quirk, he was able to scan the stack in only a matter of minutes. A smile spread across his face as he looked back at Recovery Girl. She smiled back as she said, I think we found a way to change the world. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. And lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have a great day.